at the system properties for a system where the output is the difference between the current input sample and the previous input sample. And our goal is to determine if the system is memoryless, time invariant, linear, causal, and stable. Uh, this system is actually an example of uh, the type of system that you see a lot. It's, de it's defined by a difference equation where um, on the right hand side we have the difference between x at one time and the previous time. Again, you see these sorts of things quite often when you're dealing with discrete time systems. So, um, to determine whether or not the system is memoryless, again, a system is memoryless if the output at time n depends on the input only at time n. And if I look at my definition or my equation that defines the system, the output at time n depends on the input at time n and on the previous input, the input at time n minus 1. So the system is not memoryless. Okay, the next question is whether or not the system is time invariant. And to do that, or determine that, we look at the following uh, setup. We take an input, run it through the system, and then delay it. We take that same input, delay it first, and then run it through the system. And if the delayed output of the system is equal to the system operating on the delayed input, then the system is time invariant. So, um, let's uh, see if we can figure out then if the system is time invariant. So, if we look at what we have here, uh, y1 is the difference between x1 of n and x1 of n minus 1. Okay. To find z1, we need to take y1, and you can see, here we'll use a different color so you really can see, y1, or, or uh, z1, is y1 with its argument replaced by n minus cap n. Okay. So, Everywhere in my original expression for y1 that I have an n, I replace it by n minus cap n. So down here, y1 of n minus cap n will be will be equal to x1 of n minus cap n minus x1 of n minus cap n minus 1. Okay. So, this is z1. Okay, so that basically gives us what the output of the top row is going to be. Uh, the output of the bottom row. Um, the first thing we do is delay our input signal. So, we have x2 of n is x1 of n minus cap n. Now, z2 of n is going to be the input to the system, which is x2 of n minus x2 of n minus 1. Okay, but we can see here that x2 of n is x2 of n is x1 of n minus cap n and x2 of n minus 1, so we take the n and replace it by n minus 1, will be x1 of n minus 1 minus n. Okay, so this is our expression for z2. And now the question is, we'll make this uh, even gaudier, is this equal to this? Well, I have x1 of n minus cap n in both of them, and I'm subtracting x1 of n minus cap n minus 1. Here it's n minus 1 minus cap n. This uh, time index is the same as this time index. So yes, these two are equal, and I can say that my system is indeed time invariant. So if we go back here, we can say time invariant, yes. Okay, now we need to see if the system is linear. Okay, so to see if it's linear, I take x, 
run it through my system and get y. And so in this case, y is going to be x of n minus x of n minus 1. That's my y. And then I multiply it by a. So this will just be uh, something's going on here. I'm having a hard time writing. A x of n minus a x of n minus 1. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken these two guys and multiplied them by a. Okay, now in the bottom uh, run or area, sorry, the bottom system, um, I take my input, multiply it by a, and that becomes the input to the system. So z of n is going to be a x of n, because that's my input at time n, minus a x of n minus 1. That's my input at time x, uh, n minus 1. And you can see these two guys are equal to each other. So what that tells us is that the system satisfies homogeneity, which is half of uh, satisfying linearity. We still have to check additivity, which we'll do on this screen. Okay, in additivity, I take a, an input, run it through my system to get an output. I take another input, run it through my system to get another output, and add those two together. Then I add the two inputs together, run the sum through the system, and look at the output. And if this output is the same as this, then I can say that my system satisfies additivity. And uh, again, if the system satisfies both additivity and homogeneity, then you know that it's linear. So y1 in this case is going to be x1 of n minus x1 of n minus 1. And y2 is going to be x2 of n minus x2 of n minus 1. Okay, so y1 plus y2, this will be equal to x1 of n minus x1 of n minus 1 plus x2 of n minus x2 of n minus 1. Okay, so that gives us uh, the output to the top uh, configuration. Now the bottom configuration, um, I will have uh, going into my system x1 plus x2. So the output is going to be this guy at time n, so that'll be x1 of n plus x2 of n minus this same guy at n minus 1. So this is minus x1 of n minus 1 plus x2 of n minus 1. Okay, and so I can rearrange this. Uh, take this term and this term, and then this term and this term together. So I have x1 of n minus x1 of n minus 1 plus x2 of n minus x2 of n minus 1. So basically, this one here turns out to be exactly the same as this one here, and uh, I have that the system satisfies additivity. So because it satisfies both homogeneity and additivity, I can say that it is indeed linear. So it is linear. Causality is, we ask ourselves the question, um, does the output at time n depend on inputs at time n and earlier, that is inputs uh, xn and 
possible inputs where the index is less than n, or does the system have to look in the future? So uh, at the output at time n would depend on, say, x n plus 1. And you can see up here that the output depends at time n depends on the input at time n and on the previous input at time n minus 1. So this system is causal. It does not have to look into the future to um, be able to um, uh, to be able to compute its output. Finally, stability. Uh, to check for stability, if we have an input that is bounded, so we know that x n, the absolute value or magnitude, is less than b for all n, then um, it should be pretty straightforward to see that if I take in the worst possible scenario, suppose that xn is almost uh, equal to b, just barely smaller than b, so that I have xn, and suppose that xn minus 1 is almost equal to negative b, or just barely greater than negative b. In that case, xn, which is almost equal to b, minus xn minus 1, or this is almost equal to negative b, this guy would still be less than 2b, if I take its magnitude. Okay. So by subtracting xn minus 1 from x, if I know that this guy is less than b, I know that this difference is always less than 2b. And so if I've got a bounded input, which this is the definition of, it turns out I also have a bounded output. So this system is actually stable. So there you go. Hopefully um, you found this helpful, and uh, thanks for watching.